that's the influence he'll have on Lito Adiwang, although he's anything but calm when he actually starts to mix it. Yeah, Do was able to time the explosion of Adiwang late in the first round and get into the, the clinch, although he wasn't able to finish it. Let's see if he's able to time that a little bit more as this bout progresses. So Anthony Do has a completely different strategy in this. He's trying to stay as busy as possible to confuse Adi Wong on when he should be explosive. When When is the right time? I mean, it's really hard to tell that when you have somebody who just won't sit still in front of you that's never planted. There's not really a perfect time to implement that type of explosive striking we've been seeing from Adi Wong. Right uppercut and left hand from Adi Wong there. They were glancing blows. Certainly did not stop Do in his tracks and much harder to hit a moving target. As you see Adi Wong really committing, he, he's throwing where Do is and not exactly where Do is going. Just constant movement, isn't it, from these two? Non-stop, both are swinging heavily. That was a good body kick, doubling up there. So we see um, Adi Wong's trying to change up his strategy a little bit, now going to the body, finding that opening there. That's a good adjustment. Yep. You know, the, the, the strikes were missing, uh, the hands, uh, strikes were missing from Adi Wong, but the kicks, there was an opening there, now going down to the ground. See Do timing that again, able to get inside. Yeah, but every time Do's been able to land a takedown, Adi Wong has locked up that Kimura yes. position. It's working. You're absolutely right, Johnny. To yes. do that as you're on your way down to the canvas, take some quick thought. Oh, oh I can turn now. into an armbar, though. Be a great job by Do. He, does it have it locked up? It, it is locked. This could definitely oh, this could be tight. It, He's got to drive good. in. Adi Wong right here has to drive down and in. Oh. And really try to collapse the pressure there, and he's doing a great job so far. Now he's working to get that. That was incredible. That was very, very deep. I think almost anybody else may have been finished in that, but great keep way working. for Adi Wong to keep his Action. composure in a very dangerous situation. Did exactly what he needed to do to escape. Yeah, doesn't really have time to think about being relieved, does he? Straight back into it. Yeah, both men really making the adjustments mid-fight. Adi Wang saw the movement of Do, started going to the body, and then Do as well looked to time the kicks and went under. That's how he got the takedown. But now they both position. back into the bottom position, scrambling, working hard again. Do working well with fist and forearm to get to Adi Wang's head. Do canvas. Yep. Now what have we got? Ooh, he's got a potential triangle locked up, but Adi Wang rolls up the top. Both men just perpetually moving. Uh, so hard to get that timing. Do, is that's the second time that he's reached underneath that leg there and used that to kind of create an angle. Now we find Adiwan capitalizing. He's got a potential triangle here. If he can get those legs locked with the arm in there, he's trying to go for that. But Do, um, being savvy on the ground as well, recognized that threat and was able to shut that down. Now he's in half guard. I think when, when either of these guys get on top, they need to focus on neutralizing the one on bottom. So now Do is on top. If he wants to get some offensive going, he's got to slow down the pace, be a little bit sticky, right? Because these scramble situations, oftentimes both these guys are ending up on the feet again, <laughs> neutral, right? Um, so I think maybe slowing down. But we have a potential guillotine. Adi Wong, though, keeping his head high. Oh, and now the blows come from way back. Great ground and pound, very well executed to stand tall on that guillotine then he realized as soon as that was going to break he was going to come down oh with head. the momentum and land that big right hand just relentless these two gianni there's no stopping is there it's just constant movement they have not stopped in the last Stay 10 minutes the constantly the moving ring. constantly moving both men see don't looking for a sit-up sweep over there but adi wang over here is okay adi wang can actually pass to the left side because don't does not have his guard closed 45 seconds left, second round, final bout of the evening. Rich Franklin's One Warrior Series live for you from Singapore. Misha Tate, Gianni Suba, Steve Dawson. Been great action today. Rich Franklin looking to award a contract, maybe even two. A ticket to the big time. And these two know that that is what's on the line. Great job by Do, extending the leg of Adi Wang and using that with his underhook to get back up. But Adi Wang showing that strength, showing that explosiveness, pulls him back down to the ground. Looking to put that kind of crank pressure. You know, he could turn that into a submission if he laces that bottom arm through, but 
that may be harder than uh, it looks right here in this position because Time. Oh, what a good display of martial arts. Go. And his opponent, Lito Adiwan, in the red shorts. Well known as Team Lakai outfit with the blue tape around his wrists. Lito Adiwan has looked impressive on his way here to the big show. He's going up against Senzo Ikita the former Pancras Flyweight World Championship. This is a step up for Lito Adiwa. Let's see how he does here. Lito with that wide stance, arms and hands, wide apart, light on the balls of his feet, on his toes there. His opponent just faking him out, just pushing him towards the wall of the circle there. Exchange early kicks for the first time. 30 seconds into this contest. on the Kato's arm right now. Kato just grabbing the circle with his toes there. He's released it now, but that's an illegal move. So he got away with that. And he's, he's been circled away from the circle edge now. Uh, that looks so tight by Kato, a veteran. He knows what, what's at stake here. He's not going to give up so easily. Kato pops out now. 45 seconds or more, he was in the hole. must be draining for both athletes. Oh. As they came up, there's damage to the right arm, quite clear to see. Maybe a dislocated elbow or something like that. As they came up, it was quite obvious that he didn't want any more of that. Both of them representing two of the best uh, teams in mixed martial arts. That's right, we have uh, Lito Adewang from Team Leke. Uh, so, trains up in Baguio, up in the mountains. Unlimited cardio, fantastic wrestling as well. And we also have Manuel Huerta, the tick. He's training out of Phuket top team, and he's the assistant wrestling coach there, and he is also very good at wrestling. Let's see what happens here in this ring. I wish you, I wish we had a camera on us right now, because uh, Peter, I don't know if you just saw that, but Mitch, right then, was leaning forward, <laughs> and he is glued to the action that's going on right now. He doesn't want to commentate. He just no, he wants to watch this. I'm just going to let you guys do the talking. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy the show. Lito Adiwang is a very highly touted prospect out of Team Lakai. He is surrounded by how many world champions oh. does Team Lakai have right now? I can't count them. Uh, it's, what was it? You need two, both three, hands. You need ten, both hands. 20. It is, uh, he's got, you know, sparring partners like Joshua Paschiao, Kevin Bellingon, the current champion, Jehe Ustakwio, Edward Foleyang, wow. Onario Bonario, Edward Kelly. The list goes oh, on and stars. on. And Lito Adiwan is the next generation of Team Lakai fighters here at One Warrior Series. But he's got Manuel Huerta, who's trained a lot out of Alliance MMA. So his buddy, our current heavyweight champion, Brandon Vera, is probably glued to his screen right now, watching Manuel Huerta, the tick, throw down. But Lito Adewang has some very, very good striking. That's going to be a big advantage for him against Manuel Huerta because, uh, you know, being a wrestling coach is one thing. You're definitely going to be training Muay Thai at Phuket top team. But having a fantastic base from a very young age in, in, in Sanda or, you know, in, in Kung Fu generally uh, will allow you to do some crazy stuff with your kicks that you won't get in Muay Thai. I'm wondering when we're going to see a takedown attempt from Puerta. He seems comfortable on his feet, changing the stances, going from southpaw to orthodox, light on his, quick with his movement, light on his feet. He wants to. He's just a, a bit afraid of what leg is going to come from where. I think that, that's the problem right now. And he did actually catch one of Lito's uh, legs earlier, but Lito managed to brush it off. Okay. Not bad there, Manu Huerta getting in some kicks of his own. Some uh, left low leg kicks, left high head kicks. Trying to get that takedown. Ankle grab there, ankle pick. Both of these guys looking very, very composed, very, very focused. 
They're still trying to gauge out their distance, I think. Uh, you know, Lito, I'm sure, has heavy hands, but he hasn't really thrown them too much yet. Actually, uh, the, the tick actually managed to land more hands earlier, like solid hands on Lito than the other way around. I want to see more kicks from Lito. I really do. I'm excited to see Kung Fu. Is, is this... A, is this a, oh, nice combination. Went to the body with the uppercut. Oh, with the right hand. He's panicked. He's really, really panicked. Lito's just going to carry on down this path. Look at him just beaming. Look at him just glowing almost as he's marching forward. Throwing some serious heat with those hands. Oh, my goodness. There you go. The, the, these are the baggy uh, Team Laka hands that, you know, we're talking about. It's like Filipino boxing style. They love it. Makes in with the kung fu striking is really their thing but it, it's going to be hard to take them down because their wrestling at team like is pretty amazing too oh i you know i would not want to be in there with lito right now but if manuel huerta can get his flow the takedowns are going to come out strong when he gets on the ground who knows what will happen we we haven't seen it yet i do know that you're a kung fu practitioner peter davis but they you know, they call it they developed their own style of yes. Yes. That Lakai style. oh beautiful front kick landed there oh. That was an uppercut to a hammer fist on the ground. That was a fantastic combination striking. That was amazing. Go! Paddy Wong with a 7-2 and two mixed martial arts record has a winning appearance in Rich Franklin's One Warrior Series already to his name. Da Silva is 2-1, and one, making his One Warrior Series debut. Now, De Silva is a KO artist, so let's see what he does with Lito, who also likes to stand and bang. That guy is very, very dangerous, and, you know, training with the Team Makai guys, it's expected. Yeah, this is going to be a striking exhibition, I imagine. Doesn't look dissimilar to Kevin Berlingo, does it? Pokey tail in the back, and he's got that ferocity too. That's right, a massive knockdown there with a big right hand. Super confident, and Ian... Our referee calls an end to this competition with a TKO finish for the first round for Lito Adewan. The risk will be soccer team from the K Conference near Chen Rai back in July 2018. Finds himself here against the Thunder Kid, Lito Adewan. The crowd inside the Mall of Ranger Arena behind the latest sensation from Team Lugar. Outside making from Pompsody Mixa Dippy, Muay Thai, North Thailand champion. 72-17 Muay Thai record, 49 knockouts. Thunder Kid, a two-time regional Wushu champion, also a regional Muay Thai champion. BJJ Malaysia gold medalist in Johor. All blue belt BJJ Malaysia silver medalist. On a six-match finish, a high kick there.
Good job by Piat to hold that body lock nice and tight and maintain positioning. You can see that Bido you know, Adewan, I don't know if you can see, but he's got a Kimura grip on that arm right there, and he's going to try to use it to sweep and reposition. Adewan has not lost a match since 2014. A 90% finishing rate, you can see why, including a massive amount of first round finishes. He's had five in his last six matches. A big first round finishes. He's still going for it. He's still going for it. This is Misha Tate. If you want to see more awesome One Championship content, make sure you click that subscribe button. Click it so you don't miss it.